Astrotometry log, it is April 11th, 2010. It's approximately 2133 UTC. This is a follow-up on the previous video where I forecast a coronal mass ejection based on an incoming sun grazing comet. And if you look over here, you'll see the ejection occurring. And when it gets out to this position that is halfway, basically halfway across the screen here, you can see a sort of shape to it that indicates this sort of uh, spiraling. And you can see there's this, uh, this spiral shape here that winds up uh, the time space with the approach of the comet and indicates um, the, the sort of relationship that is the basis for astrotometry. And it has been previously um, denied uh, by uh, the people who are actually uh, responsible for um, bringing us this, this discovery and this technology that there is a connection. Uh, here's the Naval Research Laboratory's page on sun grazing comets. A popular misconception is that sun grazing comets cause solar flares and CMEs, coronal mass ejections. While it is true that we have observed bright comets approaching the sun immediately before CMEs and flares, there is absolutely no connection between the two events. And this is something that I have actually been using to forecast the CMEs because clearly there is in fact a connection that has been very very evident um, in the solar minimum because during the the peak of the solar cycle and back when the sun was much more active these comets were much more common and so were the coronal mass ejections and so it's counterintuitive that this comet would hit the sun and then it would take so long for the sun to react to it if there was a three-dimensional causal relationship. And in astrotometry, this is understood to be a hyper-time relationship. There is a, uh, a very, very good reason that the Naval Research Laboratory holds this belief, because the active region that creates the solar uh, coronal mass is present long before this, this comet gets anywhere near the sun. And so this region that ejects is active for sometimes days, uh, you know, as much as a week and a half, maybe longer, before it ejects the mass. And so in astrotometry, it's understood that this incoming comet leaves a foreshadow on the sun in the form of the active region. And that when the comet passes through, uh, basically the time axis, when the comet is, uh, the mass of the comet is disintegrated by its proximity to time, when the mass energy relationship is unfolded in time space, this is the resulting occurrence. And this is a very difficult thing to understand because it requires a hyperdimensional understanding of the universe. It demonstrates that the, the solar system that we see, the three-dimensional view of the sun, is a sort of illusion. And so in astrotometry, it's understood that the magnetic field, this is the uh, current sheet, the heliospheric current sheet, and it's understood that this magnetic field is what carries the Earth itself through time. And so if you, have, if you have the Earth that is being carried through time by this electromagnetic field, when something comes into the solar system, this field is disturbed by that object. And it's the Earth's translation through this field that we perceive as the active region and the subsequent coronal mass ejection on the sun when that object no longer disturbs the current sheet. And so this is a paradigm shift of unprecedented proportion. And the 
earthquake forecasts and the relationship between the coronal mass ejections and the tropical cyclones are really just the tip of an incredible iceberg that we are uh, now scientifically going to be able to unravel with the relationship between uh, these events that happen in the cosmos but are indicators of the nature of the actual true nature of the relationship between matter and energy, time and space. And so as a, um, as a, a, a precursor for a, uh, a, a tropical cyclone in the southern hemisphere, as the indicator, or in astrotometry it's technically, this is the hypertime foreshadow of that event. Because as this, as this object moves, seems to move out from the sun, what's actually happening on the Earth is that the Earth's translation, again, is being disrupted as it moves through time by this apparent coronal mass that's being ejected. And so the, the uh, disturbance in the current sheet itself, in the electromagnetic field itself, as the Earth moves from moment to moment, manifests as this cyclonic storm activity. And I realize that this is, I realize how difficult this understanding is, but this is really where uh, our, uh, a lot of attention needs to be focused on moving um, the, uh, the three-dimensional uh, third rock from the sun, um, uh, mindset out of this, uh, out of this uh, uh, sort of um, misconception, um, this 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 very very serious, I believe serious misconception about the nature of the cosmos, because this nature uh, is going to remain. This these relationships are not going to change. And we have to adapt to this reality because this reality is not going to adapt to our perception of what we uh, believe reality to be. And so if we want to be successful in our ventures, in our um, um, engagements with these uh, energies, we need to understand what we're doing better. And so that's the, the, the deeper mission of astrotometry is to bring a better understanding of these relationships so that we're better prepared to uh, engage uh, this, this sort of reality.